Good morning, folks. This was the sunset over Columbus, Ohio last night. She dances with the particulates for a moment before slowly tuning up the pink before bedtime. Let's begin with the planets. As we currently sit, Earth is six days from seeing Mercury pass directly behind the sun. It's called a geocentric conjunction because they come together from Earth's point of view. I'm going to spin the diagram around so we can watch Venus, Earth, and Mars ready to line up as we head into May. It's May 10th, actually. A geocentric opposition of Mars and Venus. They are opposing Earth, opposite sides. And at that exact same time, Saturn will geocentrically oppose the Sun for the primary planetary position of the first half of the year. Looking back to yesterday's large earthquake in Papua New Guinea, Per yesterday's live broadcast, there was no devastating tsunami. They're looking at a 3 to 4 inch wave that was detected. A hailstorm in India has killed a young man. I'm remembering some of the terrible hail stories from India the past few years. Of course, the primary weather story is Uyen candidate number 5. Jack now has cyclone status and winds are expected to peak soon. Luckily, a weakening is expected after tomorrow. We're not sure the coastline of Australia will see more than rain. That system we had our eye on yesterday over New Zealand unfortunately did drop significant flooding. Virtually no severe warnings in Europe tonight. Also notice it appears the Earthwind map now has rivers on there as well. That's new. Anyway, still got systems flanking the states, but they're offshore as of now. The primary storm watch in this region, apart from a northern snowstorm into Canada, is the chance for lightning and severe weather today in west central Texas. Eyes on the alerts as they'll update again around lunchtime. Folks, that's a seriously high sunspot number and a seriously pitiful amount of flaring. Folks, if you're new here, I understand context is a slippery little minx here, but this amount of sunspot should have us worrying about our grid rather than wondering if an M flare is even possible today. This is what the scientists mentioned in my speech from NASA to Lockheed Martin and across the pond. The sunspots seem incapable of the largest flaring during this time of weakening solar magnetic fields. This is the title of the video for your reference. Update is set for early May. Anyway, proton storm still ongoing, and it will get worse with the inner planet's magnetic connections bunched at the departing spot, save Mercury halfway around the backside. The sunspot number might be high, but you're about to see the result of this current march towards solar grand minimum. We have positive blue and negative red, but the mixing within penumbral regions has disappeared. I am seeing a few gamma class magnetics, but where deltas, gammas, and even betas were popping M and X class solar flares three years ago, we pretty much require a solid delta for even an M class now, and that's if we're lucky. As of right now, despite what NOAA's forecast says, there are zero delta spots in geoeffective CME position, and one departing. We're now at the solar wind telemetry. You'll remember we expected a tiny shock first, and then the bigger one from the M7. Well, the first little one has hit. Density jumped over 10 protons per cubic centimeter, and speed appeared to have matched, but more importantly, interplanetary magnetics say it's the shock, and our shield took the blow like you'd expect the shock to be taken. Electron flux got dinged, but overall, we're pretty solid, just waiting for that bigger one today. Meanwhile, the coronal hole down south is still in an Earth-facing position. The umbral and coronal magnetic fields are nowhere to be found. Luckily, that bit of red power that faded to yellow has not returned, and the power is just moderate. Folks, today is the last day before we wrap the pre-launch for the Mobile Observatory project. Last day for your email surveys asking what you want in your name slot. Again, we all give a huge thanks to you. And let's thank Ken Farber and Farber Specialty Vehicles for taking on such a different and challenging project in the name of education. Lastly, folks, Fly on the Wall audio upload to the website yesterday was one of the best we've ever had. Kong Pop Uyen came back. He is just such a joy to have on there, truly. And after about 30 minutes, we get Adrian from Suspect Sky back on to discuss disclosure, exopolitics, star water, and the ET topic in general. Shots of our star to close. Eyes open. No fear at 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.